The unsinkable Titanic didn't go down peacefully, which made finding its final resting place all the more difficult. The world-famous RMS Titanic sank in 1912, but was only discovered in 1985 on a secret mission. Although people back in the early 1900s had the approximate location of where the Titanic was, they didn't have the right technology to find it. As it went under, the ship sent several CQD signals, standing for Come Quickly Distress, to a nearby ship named Carpathia. Come at once, we have struck a bird. It's a CQD, old man, were some of the final words transmitted from the Marconi wireless on the ship. These Morse code messages were also what made the first research missions to the wreck possible. RMS Carpathia found the lifeboats filled with Titanic survivors, but the world also desperately wanted to see what became of the famous liner. Fast forward to 1953. That's when the first serious attempt to find the Titanic wreck happened. A man named Risden Beasley tried using a loud, eruptive device to locate the ship. It sounds weird, but there's science to back it up. When dynamite goes off, the waves from the detonation hit the bottom of the ocean floor. With the help of sonars, scientists would be able to locate if there was anything solid at the bottom of the ocean. But Beasley had no luck. <laughs> Another 20 years would pass before oceanographer Robert Ballard would make his attempt to locate the Titanic. Ballard had a bit more luck than Beasley. Over the previous years, underwater technology had gotten more funding and so worked much better. He tried it the first time in 1977. Ballard partnered with the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution on a mission to map the ocean floor. While the institute hired him to test out their new mapping technology, Ballard's intention was to go a little further and find the Titanic wreck. In the middle of this new technological ship, there was a hole that allowed for a long pipe to be extended into the water just above the ocean floor. Attached to the end of this pipe, Ballard installed a pot with sonars and cameras. They thought they were in for something big, and so they took the ship to sea to run some tests. That's when, on a trial run, adversity struck. The drill pipe broke, sending all of their expensive material to the bottom of the ocean floor, just like the Titanic. When Ballard failed, another important character came into this story. A man named Jack Grimm, an eccentric oil tycoon. Grimm had become famous for trying to find things such as Noah's Ark, the Loch Ness Monster, and Bigfoot. He also tried to prove the hollow Earth theory that says that the interior of Earth is entirely hollow and hosts underground cities and nations. His search consisted of trying to find a large hole on the North Pole and thus venturing inside the hollow earth. After his attempts failed, he set his eyes on the jewel liner that had sunk, the RMS Titanic. Grimm had the money, but he didn't have the know-how. So, as a billionaire, he made a big donation to Columbia University and asked in return to use some of their equipment. He hired a team of highly qualified scientists to help operate the machinery. Here's where it gets a little strange. Jack Grimm was a believer in folklore and non-conventional ways of doing things. So he brought a monkey on board and surprised the research team. This monkey, called Titan, was believed to point to a map and locate lost things. In this case, the Titanic. The scientists went crazy when the monkey appeared and told Grimm it was either them or the monkey. This expedition left Florida Without Titan, yes, there would be no monkey business. They set the course to the exact location of Titanic's last distress signal. They arrived, examined every inch of the ocean floor, but still found nothing. The first expedition lasted three weeks, but unfortunately, they found absolutely nothing. They tried a particularly good search method known as mowing the lawn, where they mimic such movements to map every inch of a larger area around Titanic's distress coordinates. The reasons for failure were important defects in the equipment and terrible weather. That's when that prior searcher of the lost Titanic came back into the picture, Robert Ballard. He didn't have the millions Jack Grimm had, but he had one thing going for him. The marine geologist was working closely with the U.S. Navy 
to locate two nuclear submarines which had sunk in the 1960s. Ballard himself says he was living two lives, one as a researcher and the other as a Navy intelligence officer. The deal was simple. He'd have a green light to search for the Titanic after he found the two missing submarines. To find Thresher and Scorpion, he used an unmanned submarine vehicle called Argo. Argo was like a little snow sled. It was attached to a bigger ship that sailed above the water. Argo was connected to the ship by a long cable, and it was piloted by a team on board. The sled had sonars and cameras that provided real-time imaging of the ocean floor, so it was a real advancement on other attempts. After much thinking, he had a eureka moment. He supposed the force of the wreck should have left a comet trail that led back to the ship. While searching for the Titanic, most people had tried to find the ship itself. But until then, it had been trying to find a needle in a haystack. That's why Ballard's logic was so brilliant. He needed to invert the order. He had another obstacle on his hands, time. He could only look for the ship after finding the lost subs. And by the time that happened, he had 12 days left. He teamed up with another scientist, and they applied the mowing the lawn method to map the ocean bed. Another important piece of information that most researchers left out was that there was a sea current moving south on the day of the disaster. This meant that the debris field should be south of the distress signal coordinates. To save time and resources, he would do a quick reconnaissance of the ocean floor, spacing lines more than three miles apart to look for debris fields. He also relied more on the camera visuals than on the sonar signals. His team took turns piloting Argo and watching the video. Days rolled by, with nothing but the empty ocean floor showing up. Until the rocks they were used to seeing started to look like man-made debris. Suddenly, there it was, the Titanic's boiler. Ballard was right. The debris field would take them back to the ship. After 73 years of searching, they had finally found the Titanic wreck. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.